need to carry match up against the life stealer. You know what? I'm going with newbie. Okay. All right. All on the Enigma. Right. Oh. Train Winter Enigma Hater. Want an Enigma that can reach a BKB. This is this is what I want, Kyle. Because <laughs> once once you have that, then I feel like the Enigma can actually be something. And all other times, it's like watching a black hole with no damage inside of it. It's just disappointing. Indeed. Um, I like newbie's draft a lot better this game. They at least have a win condition when you have an uncounterable uh, Enigma ultimate. Mm -hmm. The thing that really weirded me out was they last banned a Baden, even though. They, EG had picked Lesh and DP, so you know it's Sumail and Fierce Hero that have been selected, and they last banned a Baden when you know it's going to be Arteezy's hero. Um, Newbie at least does learn we shouldn't die to this level one smoke. They place oh, the ward, Kaka breaks it. That's such a defensive observer ward yeah. as well for the top lane. Like, I mean, you want to see the mindset from Newbie. When you leave a dire observer ward like this in position, I. Yeah. You at least are then going to be able to deep ward the observer that gets planned down by EG. Newbie were able to do this last time as well. But it's just, it's almost hilarious. You got to ask yourself, are they smart or are they shook? I, I, I it's shook, definitely shook. 100% like this is a salt shaker right now. Like newbie, like they're at least playing something slightly different. So uh, top lane, it will be like Kaka supporting the top lane, but it's, it's, it, you know, we were laughing about this a little bit during the, during the first part of the draft. I'm like, oh, Naga got picked up. Wouldn't it be fantastic if KP could finally just play that safe lane style Naga hero? They stop having to push Kaka onto uh, like the whole team around this big team fight ultimate thing. And they're actually doing it. They're pushing Mugi to the off lane as a life stealer. They're going to run dual lanes. So at least KP has a chance to win the top lane. But it's still up against an Ancient Apparition and Troll. Yep. That's a very, very hard lane to still beat. I also... Um... I, I favor them because all they really need to do is play passively. AA is a lot stronger in tri lanes or with heroes he can land kills on. But when you have just Enigma Naga, it's very difficult to pressure them out of lane and they're always going to out deny. So it's not the enable like we saw from the task gun yeah, previously. Exactly. So, well, here's already your first aggression. So KP probably wants to bring a couple more consumables up to this top lane. He's only got two tangos left. And uh, it's just range harass from misery to make their life a living hell. Uh, and then the other lane to keep your eye on is Samael. He got completely out of control in game one. Can Faith do enough on this bottom lane to actually make it work? Or can you just rotate Mookie top lane? That'll work. Well, Newbie won first blood. Misery is on the run. He's got a little bit more movement and no Riptide and Mookie actually backed off. KP's gone jungle. Jungle Enigma is not a thing. <laughs> no, it's not. I think Okay, there he goes. So he, he farmed up a small amount with his conversions, and then he found Mud Golem himself, all bloody things as well. And Arteezy's already on bottom lane, so they keep yeah. the rotations heavily going. But yeah. now you've got the aggressive tri lane top. The thing is, this works for newbie. You want the life stealer against Lesh. The tri lane's going to annoy him, but Enigma versus Troll in a 1v1 should favor the Enigma simply because you eventually out deny him, get six, and can land a kill with a rotation. Oh, EG, they're going heavily under this with a forest drive forward. Paralyzed and Karsi to create space for the split up, gets the double song to Mugi and Kaka. Kaka thanks to stick charge, has enough life, even the small south. It gave him just enough life to survive and give Mugi the first blood onto crit. They'll take whatever they can get, even the level one booted restoration. I haven't seen that in a long time. For Faith, <laughs> any survivability, no maldic point in Witch Doctor. Yep, and this is the strength of Witch Doctor versus Disruptor in a safe lane tri lane, where Witch Doctor offers not only that sustain, but the coconut bounce to peel. A Disruptor is just throwing out a Q and praying that they'll do more damage, which is never the case when you play an AA. Yep. The mid lane is looking a lot better as well. 13 4 against the 9 1. Of course, uh, Fear has a full creep wave still yet to farm, but this is the better op option for him. EG also still in the vision of that Observer Ward that Newbie planted down. So yeah, they planted a defensive Observer Ward, but they've got this one inside the lane. So a large amount of info for Newbie to work with. And here goes your paralyzing cast, but a double bar is right from Crit. Into a one-man stun, only connected on Moogie, and then in Snare. Kaka, too deep. He thought the rest of his team was with him. They've got no paralyzing cast to create space, and that chilling touch is going to wear off just in time. So there wasn't enough bonus damage to kill off Kaka. And he was really trying to get up in their face. Yeah. The thing is, they do bait out the Chilling Touch, and that's the key, is just sustaining through that damage. It was a good opportunity to go because they had that full creep wave. That's why EG just peeled, stun into stun, chill a bit, and then use their Chilling Touch auto attacks and back away. Newbie also missing the D ward on the easy camp pull, so that ward did not help them secure the camp, and that is a big issue when you're playing a tri lane like this.
All right, uh, Ateezy completely zoned out KP. KP ran all the way back home. Oh, wait, sorry, they did get it. I'm, I'm yeah, looking yeah, at yeah. the Dire Warden thinking that it's Radiant. Yeah, this, no, no, this it's, is big for that's, 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 that's like, I, I wasn't going to question you. <laughs> okay, Kaka needs some life. Yeah, I, I think he almost needs to leave, but he can't. Like, he's got to stick around for the ensnare. In fact, he's actually trying to start it up on some mail. So this feels like Newbie wanting to rotate the support out of the lane, just wants to get something out of him first. Faith at least has mana again. Okay, well, you got consumables. Denied. Clarities get to arrive. A newbie definitely have a lot better chance in this game now. Yep. So they're getting everything they're, they're needing to stay alive. Yep. At the same time, Evil Genius is like, what, what's, what's their timing? When do they start adding the pressure to when we really see newbie being tested? I mean, it depends. It, it's a fluid game for them. The BKB troll is their first, is their real timing, but it's more about the Roche and the tier one towers. It's about, it, they have to play more of an organic and tempo based game. They don't really have the ability to just collapse on a tower and until like the SK blink dagger, because they don't have that real catch opportunity until that. So they just try and win the lanes, outplay newbie, but as far as draft and how the lanes are going, it's a far more even game than the previous one. Um, I also really like S Triple C on the Dragonite this game. I think that it's a hero. Uh, we saw Pycat do it yesterday. That a the key player for a team can put the team on his back and carry them through. Yep. They made the chilling touch out once more. SCCC get back behind the tower. Careful of the Crypt Swarm, but he's got enough life. And I gotta remember this is a Dragon Knight with uh, level two Dragon Blood. Not to mention he has that salve, so straight back up to full life. Top lane is where they uh, they made the chilling touch because Moogie Rage and ran forward at them. So it was a little aggressive. At least KP's finding some experience. Top lane, Burrow strikes forward. They've got the damage. Goodbye, Witch Doctor. Samel, the primary target of Moogie. He doesn't have any kind of infest pop, so Samel can just walk this off just like a bad stitch. They Burrow strike back through Karka. Another split up. The Chain Thunder, just so good. And Samel, a double kill for him against this defensive tri lane of Nubi. Yep, and this is the, you want AA in the tri lane, you can see why. The double stun plus AA, they're just landing kills. And if Newbie chases a little too far, that rage goes down, he's got a turn tail and run. And the Naga's just left, he's dead. And the new changes to Lesh make his lightning stun build just so much damage and harass, and you've turned around potential galore. Chris coming in, they're looking for a double virus strike once more off the double split earth. Moogie, he's raged up for the moment, there goes your virus strike, the timing was absolutely perfect. To Mail, he's got the distance on 25 HP, he survives, another lightning bounce to drop face down low. He's got one charges, bring him back up, get back up to the towel, the crit commits, the virus strike under the tier one. Moogie can do absolutely nothing, open wounds were still on cooldown, and EG continue to again. Established dominance on the top lane. In the meantime, our tour is doing well bottom, doubling up KPCS. So he's actually having a free game, and more importantly, he's alone. And whenever you're in a duel lane against Enigma, you suffer an XP, but he isn't. He's a full level in front. Okay, that observer ward should be pretty obvious for Karka if he was paying attention to it. And he's uh, looking just to try and mess around with Arteezy. Actually, I think he's looking to put down his own observer ward, but Arteezy can open up. But he has no control, Arteezy, that's the downside. Would need more support to arrive from crit. His KP has level 6 now, so Black Hole has become a thing. Uh, but man, that top lane just became unrecoverable. And I don't think anyone from Newbie can actually play there anymore. Now that there's just the Lesh who's, once again, Sumail, <laughs> top of the net worth chart, on the hero that provides tempo for his team. Yeah, 3.3k, another oh. 300 in front of, of the Troll Warlord. He has Arcanes and a Void Stone. He is so farmed. They're pushing bottom now. But mid lane, Fire Strike out. It's just a small, small little Witch Doctor. Originally, this gank was intended for SCCC, but he's had a bottom lane working with KP to bring down the tier 1 tower. But you won't push right. Here has even skilled up his Exorcism. He's got a 3 0 4 build. Doesn't want the extra damage to push out this mid tower. They have Arteezy for that instead. But it means this trade-off is coming at the same pace. So T1 Tower now drops on bottom lane. T1 Tower in mid. DK starting his TP in. Fortification is not available for newbies. So it's just going to be a straight one for one. But the one downside of this new Leshrac Lightning build is that while you can crush lanes and pressure them, you don't actually hit towers for quite some time. So 
he just he can farm the creep waves, but if they shove it into Life Stealer, he'll just CS under tower, always has the rage TP away, and threatens like rotations from a witch doctor TP or something like that. That Lesh build too was always as a support, right? Like it was uh rarely it, as a core. The TI five Lesh you would build this way with the max lightning, but they nerfed it into the ground and since the recent buffs it hasn't really uh been back. It was usually the edict with maybe a point or two in lightning to land stuns, but now from what I've seen Sumel do, it's just max lightning all the time. You just spam that out, damage output's insane. Talk up with an Invis rune getting in behind Samel. Misery and Crit are still in the neighborhood. Fate's coming over. At least they got Malediction this time to work with. Instead, onto Samel. TP's on the way. It's Enigma looking to bring in that black hole. Not to mention SCTC rotating him through the rear. They can already kill off Samel. It's a good streak to end. KP got the Malphus onto Crit, but he's up in the trees and away. It's Instead onto Misery. He cannot escape Dragon Tail. It's on cooldown. They need to outwalk the cold feet. Able to do so. And SCC, he couldn't close the gap. Yep. He actually couldn't get the Dragon Tail off, so with all of that, Samael is the one to die. And Nubia are a five man ball trying to force the lane, but Fear's gonna be forcing mid in the meantime. Artidi's farming bottom, and Nubia, the best case yep. scenario is they bring down a tier one tower. It's that same story from last game. Nubia's rotating five heroes, EG's bringing three, and in the meantime, they have two cores always shoving in side lanes, and you, you can't push a tower in Slash Rack with this build, but you can defend it real well. Taka, that's an optimistic TP. He needs a lot more support if he's gonna do this. He is already rotating to move to the bottom lane to get that kill onto Karka. It only requires one range whirling axes and then Crypt Swarm. And Karka tries to dodge it with Mirror Image. Spirit siphons up. Karka will die. Good rotation from Fear. Now KP, like it seems like only just before he uh, TP towards top, he's had to run all yeah. the way to bottom lane. Yep. And that the Dragonite TP's in as well, so it's just two of Newbie's cores just for nothing. Yep. Which means Samael now takes top lane with the help of crit. Yep. They got the catapults up there too, so as you can just see, like EG is just playing around the map. They push one lane, force a response, they're already pushing the other. And they just keep ping-ponging Newbie around the map. Mm -hmm. And Newbie's the team that needs fights, because they don't have the wave clear or the farming speed to really be able to keep up with EG's tempo unless they're able to land big kills and take big fights. Yeah, that's probably the reason too why KP's holding onto that 1800 gold. If he can reach that blink dagger and actually have the initiation he needs. Then you're looking pretty good. Well, forest strike. Oh my lord. With a double ice blast. There's no way for Kaka to live through this. And if Faith gets hit one more time, which he does, he also falls down. But they keep the damage going. Maybe Mugi can try and turn this one around with the help of KP and the Maledict on the Samel. The regeneration is good enough. He's got 117 HP to survive on. They just um, can't get close enough, Nubi, to get yeah. these kills. I mean, that was a great play by Mugi too. He was in the Golem, right? And when he pops out of it, he does the infest damage, throws the rock, then gets two little rocks to throw. And that's like an 800 HP hero, and he still can't kill him. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of sad in a way to see this, but it may also be essential. KP gets the hand of Midas. It's the standard build for the Enigma offlane, but it really does oh. feel like Nubia just now having to delay the game even more before K KP could be it's, ready to fight. That's the thing though, it really isn't. This is a game, the, the dream, you need an HOD in this game. You have two heroes that right click, neither one of whom can buy one, and then you can go for a pipe. Like, the idea of Enigma in this game is not to scale into the late game and hit 30, 40 minutes. You won't make it that long and have a fighting chance if you go this build. This is HOD, like, that's the Enigma build, it's Helm of the Dominator. Doesn't look like it in this game, however. I mean, I agree. That's why there's 6,000 gold behind in 12 minutes. Song of the Siren is out. Kaka found his target. It's Arteezy. SCCC is on the way. Here comes your ice blast. It's Arteezy will just try and stand his ground. I say try. Uh, he won't succeed. The Maldic damage is way too much. Oh, is it? Arteezy. He's fast boost. Starts the TP out. They don't see him. Oh, the Maldic pop. He did everything he possibly could to make that work. And even Mugi knows he's in trouble. Samel is rotating over. Straight TP out to safety. Did he die in base? He did not. He no, he, the TP he, off, he, right? died, he died outside. Yeah. So, uh, if he had, that would have been zero XP as he would have died to the Maledict. And that would have been real punishing for Newbie, but he died just in gets him in time. But he gets the kill. Like, that's three for one. He trades. He lost no gold either. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Well. Evil Genes is gonna keep the pressure up on top lane, fear and some mail. And it's a scary combination. You haven't even burned exorcism until now. And Nubi will not come and fight this. 
I, I just don't see a pathway back for them into this game if they don't get that dream fight. And as we saw last game, EG's very comfortable playing around the Naga, and I don't see them giving it away. Oh. Got to find some kind of way back into it. Evil geniuses. Do you actually feel like they need a Roshan before they can go high ground? Well, actually, we get to have another quick look at this. So this is, this is Faith is just feeling like he had a chance. But the fact that he got the Maledict off kind of saves it. And then Arteezy juked the left, you've gone down, and then the TP channel, boom, boom, pops inside the lane. This is like, <laughs> at least it's a smile when you die. You know you're in a good position if you're smiling when you die. That's a, that's a, guys, why are there three heroes bottom? I don't know. They got, they got, they, they got an issue with me. You'll have an issue with them even more as Arteezy now finishes up a Battle Fury, so this, uh, this farming speed is going to really accelerate. He's already number one. Like, he's sitting at 7.4k net worth. But then it's just... What, BKB next? So he can just stand through... Actually, no, you got in Snare. Yeah. So how, how do you run it? Do you just get, like, S and Y? Do you do you stat it up? Uh, I think it's a Blink game for our tour. A Blink? Blink, blink or Shadow Blade after the BKB. That way you're allowed to just... Because you want to go for the Enigma, you want to go for the Naga. You don't want to be in a position where you're forced to run in, possibly get stunned, netted, Enigma hold. You want to be the guy making space for your backline, which is full of a Sand King and all these Intelligence heroes. So you you want to allow the DK Lesh to play around your uh, your initiation. Yeah. He's going to rush BKB on KP, and they're going to look to take a fight, but. I just feel like EG's game plan for this style of play by Newbie, where they don't care that they'll always lose the team fights. They're going to just out farm, take the tier 1, tier 2s earlier, yep. and then get a Roche. And if you look at their advantage, it was 6 at 12 minutes, now it's 8,000 gold, approaching 9 rapidly by near 16. And Newbie has to fight them in order to turn the tide. So there's that question mark, right? So, like, Newbie get the fight, but then have to take an objective shortly after. How is this going to be possible for them to do? Yeah. So, momentum must be up. You must have a lot more damage onto the Live Stealer, who's currently infested inside of the DK, who found a Shadow Blade. So, Newbie, under the cover of Smoke, are trying to find a kill. There's multiple heroes now being revealed in mid, so this three-man gank train up on north needs to head down south, and they're going to find the best target possible. It's to mail, but he was outside of the Invis of Shadow Blade. The smoke broke on SCCC, and he just walks away. And you can see Crit looking for the fight. Now, remember, Life Seal's already popped outside of him. So Crit, he's going to be the man to be initiated on. Faith, paralyzing cards to work nicely. If Samel was going to stay close, which he does, and Crit just fire strikes up the hill, triggering the one charge, giving him that extra life back again. So we've even got the Ice Blast on the way in. Crit, is that pop going to be enough with the last hit? He's trying to help out, and she just stands the ground, soaks up a breathe fire. But this is the thing, EG doesn't care about these sorts of deaths because, one, Arteezy is still farming, and they're putting themselves in a position where if they die, it's only one or two heroes, and they're on the newbie side of the map. And since newbie has to spend so many cooldowns, the infest, the DK ult, maybe an enigma ult or a song later, they'll never be able to turn these kills into objectives. And that's what they really need to come back into the game. And there's also going to be a Yul's, there's a Yul's on Sumail, a Yul's on Fear, and uh, Misery is also buying a Yul's on AA. So a lot of them. And that even, uh, it's an item that allows them to continue to scale and just move around the map faster. Yep. Mana regen, it, it's a stay on map item. And it also just allows them to continue to kite and play around newbie's spells. Like, they don't, they don't have the BKBs yet. It should be the easiest throw charm for evil geniuses unless newbie can close the distance. Until that BKB is up on the Enigma, Anubi won't feel confident enough for it. Jesus this song of the Siren now, it's already too late. Roshan's been taken. The ensnare was on the space creating crit. Teezy will be the man to carry the Aegis of the Immortal and Evil Geniuses. Kinda on the ropes, uh, or keep keeping Newbie on the ropes. Blink dagger, okay. Over-aggressive Death Prophet on the way. Yep. I like it, I think that fear, uh... Arteezy's probably gonna get the S and Y into BKB, and then I think he can go for the blink. This is a lineup. Oh, he's just gonna rush the BKB. That works too. So now you have uh, Arteezy that can just siege without being, uh, without worrying about anything, because you just gonna oh, BKB the spell. They found KB. He's saving money for that BKB, and he's just gonna keep falling short. Yeah. And 35 seconds on the sideline. That's the amount of time you would have required to farm the rest of his BKB. 
Yep, and you have a blink on crit now and a blink on fear. So they can just dive base, you see? Oh, this could be big. It's the fresh bloodstone of Samael, so they use the combination. No one else is around here, but Samael, Yule Scepter, support's coming in. They're going to be ready for a Boris Dragon. There it is, and the rage wears off. Samael is the stuff, but crit makes it work. Two heroes will fall, Samael will live. Thanks indeed. Nope, two extra charges on the yep. bloodstone as opposed to removing them. And keep in mind, they killed the Enigma. They then turn that fight around, they kill two, as RTZ still takes the bottom tower. 13,000 gold ahead at 18 minutes. This is just a repeat of, uh, of two months ago. EG just outclassing, outdrafting, and outplaying Newbie in every way. What was it Red said the last three times these teams have matched up? Evil Genes has been the ones to take the victory. When you have moments like this, when Newbie, they have an isolated hero, the other and four players of EG are on the other side of the map, yep. and you still can't finish the job. The Yules just bought just enough time. He he died. He lives there solely because the uh, S-Triple-C did not get the Shadow Blade hit. He opened out with stun instead of the auto attack. That bonus damage would have landed the kill. Grin <laughs> <laughs> all you want. Right now, Evil Genius is happy, feeling insanely confident. Their laning phase has gone perfectly. The whole series has gone perfectly, and it's been a big time to pull it out. This is the breakout competition. The winner of this will face up against LGD in the upper bracket quarterfinal, while uh, the loser, that's actually where the road ends. This is elimination four games day. Four teams get removed from just the first day of the LAN competition. I mean, the way they're playing right now, I'm not sure. I mean, Newbie seems to just succeed against Chinese teams. They they consistently are like the first, uh, best or second best in the region. Mm -hmm. But then they play against certain teams in the West and they just do not look the same at all. Yeah. It's, it's like China, China is happy to play Newbie's game, but the West, yeah. They do not. Mm. Uh, they see Newbie's game and they say, we're going to play our own. We'll yeah. see how that, we'll yeah. see how that goes. This, this seems really predictive. Like, I, I, I think we can get around this somehow. Mm -hmm. How? Because we already know what they're going to draft. I remember you having all those big chuckles uh, like during drafting phase. It's like, yeah, I can keep on chuckling when my when the sheet which I drew up when I go into this game. Bands and picks are exactly the same as what was predicted. And with Newbie, that appears to be exactly the case. More Blink Daggers arriving for Evil Genius as a Blink onto Samael now. So Blink Yules could be an initiation item for Samael to work I, with. I'm not I'm not part of the scene at the moment. You know, I'm <laughs> casting here, but a dirty secret about North hey, America, hey, guys. AA is the hero. <laughs> Game plan for it. And there's also another dirty secret. Casters are part of the scene, you dick swindles. <laughs> I just can't believe they third pick DK with, with AA in the pool. The virus strike is out. KP wants to fight. He's got that fresh BKB. Looking for the target, the Sentry Ward. It's a little bit further down to the south. They don't see SCCC just yet. But how do you initiate forward? Paralyzing cars can bounce into the back lines. But EG are just playing the distance game. And Moogie still isn't here. He's farming up inside the Radiant Jungle at the moment. He'll have to TP back in again later. But he's trying to make the most of every single second he's got. And Moogie is going for the Radiance build, which is... Oh, that's easy. Here you go again. Pop the ulti, and snared up, he's taking a lot of damage from the conversions. And then again, all three conversions die, more money for them. K KP and Mugi are itemizing and playing this game for 40 to 50 minutes. Yep. EG has no intention of allowing it to go that long. Charles takes a tier 3 tower, even if he loses the egg with Immortal now, you're still okay with this. And in fact, they don't even get that. Yep. They don't need to. The second rush is the game time, I mean... They're, even against a Midas on Enigma, they're still eating the map. Now they get the tier 3, the shrines, like, this is just textbook Dota 2, how to win the game. You get yep. the tier 3, you get the shrine, the second Roche, go high ground with BKBs and all cores having spent all their gold. Just keep controlling the map, that's all you need to do. And Newbie will eventually just whittle away. They control no resources of the map. But that's where, like, that's the reason why Moogie's sitting inside the Radiant Jungle, right? Like, he's, he can't get out of here. He has to, he, he has to almost just farm exclusively the Radiant Jungle because it's the safest place in the map. They don't own the Dire side at all. Yeah, that's, that's, just... that's some, that's some nice, some nice stats for Samael. Been a good day for him. And this is the three position, remember. I'm trying, I'm finding it hard to not 
the flame. SCCC dust it up. Here comes Crit and nice done. The bash, however, from RTZ will connect. I want to give massive props to Crit. Like Crit's timing, like the the bar strike which happened, I think around like the five minute mark, uh, and like perfectly waiting out the rage. He's always been there to get a double stun at least, yeah. and in every single fight, it's gonna be big movie as the one who's been stunned. So he's that, he rages initially, Fear blinks into the back line, he's focusing on face, little on the ethics of Mel will jump as well, your black hole is there, you end up getting a kill for the buyback, money is the war of attrition, Kaka, he's got the distance, getting away from that spirit, he has to escape the exorcism, but here comes your ice blast, a little bit of a chilling effect, Kaka, Ooh, Walks back that the too. opposite direction. Yeah, I think he just wants to fight this one. Like, your Black Hole BKB is down. What really does Newbie have left to fight with? Paralyzing and Kass gonna have to be your ravage for the moment, but SCCC locked inside the Cold Fifth. They already have, already have the vision. Samel with more stuns. Newbie pushed all the way back into the base. Mugi, you can rage up now. He's got the extra damage thanks to that relic, but it doesn't really compute into anything else. They've lost their entire top ranks, and Kaka calls it. It's 24 minutes in. We didn't even get 15 minutes the full game time now of this series for Evil Genius to eliminate Newbie from DAC 2018. I mean, what do you think? Are they top tier?